Hello everybody, welcome to Chatterbox Quilts Live for March 2020. Thanks for joining me today. If you are here for the first time, make sure you say hello. Well, say hello anyway if you're here. But if you are here for the first time, welcome. We do this usually once a month. I think we'll be doing it a little more often right now considering the situation we are currently in, just to keep in touch with everybody. So if you are here and you've been here before, Thank you very much for joining me again. So I do appreciate you stopping in and chatting with me. And usually there's something that we're learning. So I'm going to be doing a tutorial today. No different than any other time I'm doing it. So if you are one of my chatties, those are members of my Chatterbox Quilts Facebook group. Hi guys, thanks for joining me. We've had a whole bunch of new members join the last few days, which is great. I think people are looking for more uh, connection online and that is one way to do it with me. Also, if you are one of my Chatterbox, sorry, if you're one of my members in the Quilter's Way, TQW, thanks for joining me again today, guys. I was just live with them uh, a couple hours ago, I guess, and we were chatting and talking and learning a little bit as well. So be sure to say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. If you're watching on replay, put in replay because I do go back and look at the comments. So if you ever have questions as we're going along or suggestions, I love getting suggestions. Be sure to put them in the chat area as well. You just type it in there. Okay, so I'm going to be running a few different cameras today. So bear with me as we go back and forth. I'm running it off my computer, but I'm going to be in different places here. Hey, is that Anissa? Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. And Rob, good to see you again. Rob is one of my TQW members and one of my chatties as well. One of my good buddies from across the sea there. Mary, hello from Michigan. We've got Michigan in the house, Ohio in the house, and Netherlands in the house. I'm sure we'll have more people joining us soon as well. So what I want to talk about today, I'm going to go back to my cutting table, which is behind me. Um, I want to talk to you about making a block called a Polaroid block, and it involves fussy cutting. So I want to show you how I do that as well. So let me switch over to my other camera. So you're not going to see me, you're going to see my hands and stuff, but I want you to see up close what exactly I'm doing. So I'm going to be at my cutting table and then I'm going to come to my sewing machine. So let me switch back to the other camera behind me here. And hopefully, let me make sure up my, there we go, up my sound so hopefully you can hear me better. So coming back here, I'm going to turn my iron on because I need that too. So what's a Polaroid block? Well, Polaroid blocks are these little guys here. I have a whole bunch of them here. So they are little ones that look like, we're over here, there we go, with the camera, they look like this. So you remember the Polaroid cameras we had a few decades ago and a little photo would spit out and it had, it developed in front of your eyes and it looked like this. It had a board around it, a white board around it and the picture was in the middle. Well, that's what a Polaroid block is. Now, I didn't know much about these. I hadn't heard about these. Let me change this so you can see all these different little Polaroid blocks. So. First off, you need some background fabric, and guess what? It's going to be white. Okay, <laughs> they're all white, and as you can see, they're all white. Now, one, this little one here, you probably can't see, but it actually is a tone on tone, so it's there's a little bit of pattern in that one. Most of the other ones are just completely white, so it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of a design on them. But you do want to look like a frame, and you're not going to be putting these all together probably in one project or a few projects, so you want to make sure that they're all going to you know, look the same. You don't want one to be, you know, some other color on the white and it really sticks out. And so that's what we're making today. And let me just, I just want to change one little thing here. Sorry guys, so I walk in front of the camera. I just want to uh, change something here for just a second so you don't have my name popping up there all the time. You don't need to have that. So let me just take that off there. There we go. That'll give you more, more of what you can see here. All right. So when you're making these, what do you need? Well, you're going to need some fabric that you can fussy cut. You want to have a design that fits into the center. And the center is two and a half inches um, unfinished. So you're looking for fabrics where you've got a two and a half inch, or roughly two and a half inch little design that you can put in the center there, okay? So I have this little cat fabric that was actually sent to me by one of my quilting friends. And this is what our, we're doing this for our guild. We're doing block exchanges, okay? We're exchanging these Polaroid blocks. And so when they started this, they gave us this little frame. So this is what the Polaroid block is going to look like. It's the size it's going to be. 
and you can see there's the cutout in the center. So you can use that to see if the fabric you're considering will work or not. Now you can see in the cap fabric here that it works absolutely perfectly actually. <laughs> so I was like, oh wow, that works really well. Any of them will fit right into that two and a half inch square. Now this is just cardstock. I can't use this for cutting. What I can do though is I can take it, and this is one of the fabrics that I used here, and there's all different animals all tossed all over the place, but they will fit in here as well. You want to iron your fabric obviously first before you do anything, but you can get the little cow in there, for example, or I can get the little pig. I can turn around the other way, obviously, once I've cut them out. But what you can do with this, if you have a frame like this, just a two and a half inch cutout in the center, is you can find the one you want. I'm going to go back to the cats here because they're easier to see. Let's look at this little white guy down here. So you could take it and you could actually put it on the fabric and then use a either a water erasable pen or friction pen or whatever and you could draw the lines there and then you could take it away you go in and cut it out so that's probably the easiest way to do it as far as if you don't have any other tool to use to do that right and then you need to know what sizes your other fabrics need to be now again they gave us a little piece here now you can find this online too little instructions i should say they gave us but you can find these online if you are looking. Just look under Polaroid blocks and you'll see lots of different ways to, to make them and what to do with them afterwards. Lots of suggestions on how to put them together. But basically what you're going to need is strips of obviously white fabric. You're going to need strips like with the fabric is what I did. I cut these. I bought yardage and I cut them. This is one and a half inches wide by width of fabric. I'm going to subcut it. And you also need strips that are one inch wide and you're going to subcut those as well. And then what happens with those strips, let me just show you. I'm going to pick up these little guys so I can show you on my Artelli uh, pressing surface here, on my roundabout, I can move it over, is you're going to have a one inch piece, one inch wide by three and a half at the top, and you're going to have one inch by two and a half at the side, another one inch by two and a half at the other side, and then the bottom is a little thicker and that's where that one and a half inch piece comes in, and that's going to be three and a half as well. So when you're cutting these, you're actually going to put on the sides first, your one inch by two and a half inch length. And then you're going to put on your top piece, which again is one inch wide by three and a half. And then the bottom, which is one and a half by three and a half. Okay. So that's how you're going to make the block. So they're fairly simple to do. Now there's different ways of putting these fabrics on. I have these all cut as you can see, because I found that was easier. Some people like to take their, little fussy cut two and a half inch piece in the middle and put them on the strips. Leave this as a long strip, put them on and cut them in between. I didn't find that worked as well. I find it didn't get as, you know, even though I was cutting it evenly, it, they didn't go together as well. So while I thought that would be faster, I ended up having putting the blocks together and then I ended up having to trim them as I went along. So, you know, I would add on the side piece, let's say first, you know, I'd have the long strip. This would be my long strip here, right? And I'd add this little guy on and I'd add another one and another one and then I would cut it off. But it wasn't, I don't know whether it was me, but I just didn't find it was cutting as well. So even though it should be a quicker technique, I actually found the end, it was easier to just go along, cut all my little pieces for the size, one inch by two and a half, just cut, 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 so cut that strip up and then cut a bunch that were three and a half inches long and then I did the one and a half by three and a half and just cut them. It worked out a lot better. It made it much more accurate in the end. And that's what we're looking for, right? Okay. So and I just want to go back and check here as I talk. I can't see. Sorry, Amigo, as I go past you, I just want to make sure we have no questions. Okay. So no questions yet. Okay, good. <laughs> Let me go back again. So how you're making these, we talked about how you can mark the fabric pieces in the center, right? sorry, the center pieces you can mark, you can mark using this little guy and you can mark the pieces that you're going to put in the center. Okay. But that's not always as accurate either. Okay. Depending on how well you've drawn your lines and everything and your lines take up a bit of space and everything too. So I found an easier way to do this. Okay. And I want to show you that. And of course it's a Martelli tool. Big surprise there. I'm really liking Martelli tools. Thanks to uh, Rob who turned me on to Martelli. Rob's a big Martelli fan as well, but what I like about Martelli is that they come up with solutions for some of the things that we as quilters struggle with. And this is one of them. Because I gotta say, anytime I've done uh, fussy cutting, anytime I had to fussy cut, 
pieces, it's been a real struggle and they don't come out quite square sometimes. They're not always as accurate as I'd like them to be. I found them very frustrating. Well, luckily Martelli heard cultures talking about this and they've come out with a product that helps them, helps you with this. So I wanted to show you these today because this is actually what I use to do all my Polaroid blocks. And it was so much quicker and so much more accurate and so stress-free. So I really found this a helpful product. They have products, two products that go hand in hand. So one is the no slip square templates that come in uh, different sizes. So you get four templates in one package, two and a half up to five and a half inches. So two and a half, three and a half, four and a half and five. These little templates that are in here, here's the little two and a half one that I'm going to use, have this no slip backing on them. All Martelli templates and rulers have this on them. And I'm going to show you why that works so well in just a second. But um, this is this is part of the template set, the no slip square template set, okay? And you don't have to use this for fussy cutting, okay? You can use this anytime you want to cut two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, or five and a half inch squares in this particular package. There's a second package that has bigger squares in it as well. But you can just use it to cut out, you know, if you're making other projects and you just want to cut out a two and a half inch square, you can certainly use this particular um, template set. But for the fussy cutting, you want to use it in conjunction with this one, which is the square fussy cut windows, two and a half to five and a half. So obviously two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, and five and a half inch fussy cut templates come in here. Now these are different, okay? You can see they have a big hole in the middle, right? Okay, that's the first thing you're gonna notice. So let me show you the one I'm gonna be using, which is the two and a half inch one. And their numbers are on the bottom here. I don't know if you can see them or not because they're engraved. You can use a contrasting Sharpie marker to go over these and then you'll be able to see them. They also have guidelines along the sides if you need to line them up with other items. I haven't had to do that yet, but they do have other markings on them. So this is a frame, okay? This is the fussy cut window, they call it. I call it a frame a lot of times, but it's actually called windows. And unlike the template set that has the no slip backing on it and it's thicker, you can probably see it's how thick it is, the window is not like that. The window is just a frame and it is not no slip. It doesn't have that backing on it. You can see it's shiny, okay? Why is it shiny? What, what are you doing with this thing, okay? So what you're doing with this is, this is very much like the other little piece that I had that I was using, which I'm not sure where I put now, but anyway, I'm on the table actually still. Uh, yes, there it is. Okay, so it's gonna act like this, okay? So let me explain how this works. You're going to take this, and I've got a paisley. This is what I want to use for my next uh, series of Polaroid blocks I need to make my guild. You're going to put this down, and this frame or window allows you to go along your fabric and see where you want to cut. Okay, so it allows me to find a motif in the fabric that's going to fit in that two and a half inch window here. Okay. So I can do that, I can just barely put some of these in. Now, this is with your seam allowance included, right? So when it comes, when you finish sewing it, it's gonna be a quarter inch, a little bit less, right? A quarter inch less all the way around inside. So I'm kind of looking at these guys. I'm gonna go this guy, maybe I can get, if I get a little bit of extra of somebody else in there, it doesn't really matter. But again, I know I'm gonna have a quarter inch seam. So if I'm looking at, say, this particular one here, it's got a little bit of extra here, a little tiny bit here, but those are going to be in the seam allowance, so I'm not going to see them. What I want to see is this little haze in the center, okay? Now, I can have that as a square this way. I can use it if I want to do it as a diamond. I can fool around with this template because it just moves around, right? Very slippery, moves around. Okay, so let's say I'm going to go here, and I like that. What's my next step, okay? Because I'm not going to use this. This is not a cutting template, okay? This is a cutting template, right? So... This is two and a half on it as well. If you can see that or not, it's hard for me to get the right angle for you, but two and a half in here works with a two and a half inch window. So I'm gonna put, you know, I've selected my area I wanna cut using the window. And then I'm gonna plop in the little two and a half inch template. It just fits inside there. And there's a little bit of extra around it. That is so I can remove my window now, okay? If it was tight up there, I would have a hard time getting it off without disturbing it, okay? So I can take that off. Hopefully I didn't move it too much. And really, when you're doing this, let me let me do this again. Let me do this again. Let me do this one. Okay, you're gonna to want to hold your template, your window, I should say. 
and then hold the template. All right, so it's not going to move much, but in case I bump it or something. All right, so next thing I want to do is I want to cut it out right now. I've got all this fabric here. You could cut this down smaller if you wanted to, or you can do what I'm going to do. Don't do this with your rotary cutter, okay? Once you open it, you can see, let me close it again. To open the rotary cutter, this is a Martelli ergonomic rotary cutter as well. I'm using a 45 millimeter blade on this one. You just have to run it on the mat to open it. You hear the click, it's open, okay? Don't hold it like this, okay? Hold it like this. <laughs> I'm not showing you very good rotary cutting techniques here, am I? Okay, so what you want to do here is I'm going to put my blade straight up and down. I'm cutting from my hip. You probably can't see that very well. But I'm cutting, I'm not cutting in front of me like this, I'm cutting over the side. And what you want to do is you put your blade against the template, you roll it back just slightly, and roll it forward. And I'm going to cut past the edge there, obviously, right? And I close my cutter. I'm in the habit of closing my cutter every time I make a cut, okay? Habit. And it's a good habit. Now, a couple things. I could be using my rotary, uh, my sorry, my Martelli roundabout. I don't have the cutting mat on it. It's right here behind me, actually because I don't need it because I've got a big cutting mat. But if I wanted to, I could have my, um, I would take off my ironing surface there and I would put on my cutting surface and I could actually have my fabric up there and move it around. Really handy. Usually you want to do that when you have a normal acrylic ruler that you may be using for this, right? But because of the no slip backing on the Martelli products, I can just actually move this around. I'm going to help it a little bit here because I got a lot of fabric. But I can just move it around and because it's got the no slip backing it's not going to move on me okay and then I can go and cut my next one and again I'm going to go back slightly towards me and then move away from me okay it's just so I don't cut into the template that's why I'm moving it back a little bit and then I'm just turning it around again so you can see how I can do this okay or like I said I can use a roundabout if I have that and I want to but really I don't need to and it's kind of fun not to <laughs> so Go back and cut again. Okay, so I take off my template and I might have a little bit of thread there depending on whether I went over it or not properly. And then I've got my little square. So there's my little Paisley guy, however I want to, I can have him whichever way I want because he's a square, right? There he is. Okay, so he is perfectly two and a half, I hope, two and a half inches. He fits right into my little, yeah, he fits right in there. Perfect. Okay, so I don't have any worries that one of my lines here is going to be, you know, not quite straight and off in a bit of an angle and stuff, which is what I've run into before. So I can just use this and you saw me just moving this fabric around. I don't always recommend you do it this way. I just wanted to show you that you can do it and you can just cut it right out of that fabric, right? I can cut out wherever I want and leave the rest. Or, you know, you could cut up to that fabric and cut out a space that you're going to be working with. But it's that easy and that quick. And that accurate, that's what I love, is the accuracy. Because like I said, in the past, I have struggled big time. And that could be just me. I don't know that. But I suspect other people have the same issues. So I love this set from Martelli for the fussy cutting, for sure. The fussy cutting windows. Let me bring things back over here for a second. Because I want to actually show you how I'm going to put this little block together. Okay? So let me move a few things around here. Let me get stuff off here because I'm going to be using this pressing in a few minutes here. Okay, I've got my little pressing mat on here. Hopefully without too much cat fur on it. Let me go to the sewing machine now. I'm going to switch cameras and I'm going to show you what I'm doing over here. Okay, because we want to see how this all comes together. Okay, let me switch my cameras. We are going over here now. Still don't see me. All I get to see is my hands today. Should be in a palm olive commercial or something. Remember those, you know? They're soaking in it, palm olive liquid detergent there, dish detergent, whatever. <laughs> okay, anyway, so we want to start with our sides, right? So first thing I have to decide with this little guy is which way do I want him to go? So I don't know, he could go any way I want him to go. And we can go, I think we can go this way. Okay, so I'm going to put the sides on first, right? So I've got my little sides here. I'm going to get these in as best I can. You could pin these if you wanted to. You don't really need to because they're not very big. Okay, one thing I don't have that I usually do have here. I'll grab something. Just give me one second here. Okay, I want to get a... <laughs> I want to get a leader. 
or header or footer, whatever you want to call it. I want to get something to start here. Alrighty. So I'm working on my Genome M7 today. Takes up a lot of room, this guy. He's a big beast. Alright, so I've got to set my foot to come up for me. That would be nice for that. There we go. So, along we go with our quarter inch seam. Okay, my little footer now, the edge here. I'm going to cut that for now. Shouldn't be cutting it, but I'm going to. And just put that back in again. So if you've got, well, they've got it here. Um, I've got the, um, you know, there's a purple thing that has the cutter in the top of it. Boy, that's descriptive, isn't it? <laughs> Let me go get, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So if I was doing a bunch of these, I would be chain piecing them along, but I'm just showing you one just for now. The cutting gizmo, I couldn't remember what it was called. The cutting gizmo, have you seen one of these? You know what these are? They have a razor in the top. And so if you're chain piecing, like when I was taking these apart, instead of using my little snips, I could just cut them apart like that. Works really well for multiple chain piecing. I like to have that close by. Okay, so here we go. We've got one seam, one side, I should say, on. Now we can put the other side on as well. Let me go back here to these guys. Uh-oh. This is what happens when you have a foot pedal that has a thread cutter on. Yes! Cut my thread instead. That's not what I want to do. Okay, so because I'm doing both sides first, or each side first, sides first. Let's stitch them up first before I do any pressing. Okay, and then I want to show you what I'm doing pressing-wise. Make sure I stitch on the right thing here. I could be stitching on one of my other white ones, couldn't I? That wouldn't be good. Alrighty, so let's take these out, and this time I'm going to leave that footer in, which is going to become my meter the next time, or my header and footer, and header becomes my footer, and my footer becomes my header, and my goodness, it gets confusing. But anyway, okay, so I've got both these on here, now I want to press them open. So I'm going to switch back to the other camera. I just want to show you how I press these, because pressing is always a really big thing, isn't it? You don't always get the results you want with pressing, and there's reasons why, but it's not a pressing tutorial, however, it's sort of becoming that, isn't it? Okay. So first thing you always want to do, you want to set your seams, right? Let me turn my iron down a bit. My iron's hot, hot, hot. So I got a new iron. Yes, this is my son says this is a, that's a ski iron. Put wax on skis. It's like a retro iron. It's continental. It has no holes. Okay, it's a dry iron only. That's what I'm using these days. It's got fairly good weight on it, but it's not the weight of the iron that's setting those seams. It's the heat. Okay, so. Press to set my seams. Okay, they're down there. Next thing I want to do is I want to open them up and I'm going from my center out gently. Okay, let's not be pulling up these things. They're not in the diagonal, but still on the bias. And then again, I'm just putting the iron down on them. Not too long. You can see it's still sticking up, right? It's just a little bit of fabric we're putting in here. I'm going to fix that in a minute. Okay, let's set this guy. You may see me move my iron over a little bit. That's just to make sure everything's flat down at first. I don't have any kinks in there. And I'm not pressing on it. I'm just, you know, using the iron just gently to direct. Okay, so you can see those are pressed. Okay, they don't look very good, do they? Okay. <laughs> the little flaps and still lying flat. So now I'm using my Acorn Easy Press solution. Okay, and I'm going to do this. As a matter of fact, well, I'll do this here. Usually I wouldn't do this probably in my roundabout. I want to start this off. I need to change my tip. So this is full of the Easy Press solution. And I'm just activating it here, getting it up into that little nib at the top. And I'm just drawing it along, just like I would highlight something in a textbook. Okay, I'm just drawing it along. If you're not familiar with this product, it's amazing. I use it for pressing, like instead of spray starch, I use it for pressing all my uh, fabric first. And I definitely use it when I'm doing this. And I'm actually pressing. You can see it's laying down already. You can see how it's laying down. And I give it a few seconds just to sit in there, probably about 15 seconds to, to sit in there and soak into the fabric because that's what it's going to do. It's going to soak in the fabric. 
I don't want to put my hot iron on it until it's soaked in the fabric more. Um, and sometimes if I get too much on uh, and I put my iron on, you'll hear it hiss. Okay. And the reason it's doing that is because the product is still sitting on top of the fabric. It's not actually soaked in yet. It's not doing what I want it to do. But even just by putting that down there, it's already laying more flat. It's just amazing, this product. I love it. Okay. So again, the iron goes down. No hissing. Good. Put five or six seconds on that. And turn the other side, and if I need to, I can just make sure it's all down there again. Good. And I'm just going to put that down for about four or five seconds. Okay. So you can see how nice and flat that is. Okay. Love it. This is so helpful when you have multiple seams, especially. Works so well. Okay. So that's down. What are we doing next, do you think? Well, we're going to be adding some more, aren't we? Let's go back and let's add the other ones. I got to say, when um, I joined this exchange at my guild, um, <laughs> and I looked at these little blocks and I went, oh, well, how hard could that be? Well, it's not hard. It's time consuming, as are so many things we do, right? And we have, we're exchanging with uh, 20, I think it's 22 now, it was 23, 21 anyway, other people plus yourself, you get one for yourself. So you know, it does take a little bit of time to do these, i got to say, but they're really cute when they're done. Okay, let me go back to the machine here. All right, so I'm going to add, let's see, I'll be careful here because I actually want this to go a certain way. I'm going to add the top first. Okay. It's hard matching white and white sometimes, but anyway, let me make sure we get that in there. All right, there we go. And usually I'd have a smaller leader or ender header footer in my machine, right? So I don't have to keep stitching so far, but that's okay. All right, so I've got that little guy. There's my top and then there's the bottom. So again, I can put both of those on at the same time. So again, I would be chain piecing this, right? You don't have to just do them one at a time. If you're doing a bunch of them, you obviously be chain piecing them. Get this guy set up here. Oops. All right, so now we should have one block done. So, of course, we need to press it out too make it look like it should look okay so let me go back to the other camera and we will press it out and then it'll be the big reveal okay so again we want to set our seams you always want to set your seams right by the way i'm using a um two whatever it is centimeters millimeters whatever it is 2.0 <laughs> stitch length i am not good with metric even though we are in metric in my country I was not raised on metric system, so I still struggle with that. And we're going to go out and just make sure that's all going down. Push that down. So again, this pressing I'm doing, you know, it's probably a little more, taking a little more time than what you would usually do. But the results are really good. So sometimes, you have to weigh the benefits, which is better. Taking the time with the pressing, so I don't have to seam rip things later, because I hate doing that bob there in this thing. You know, or not being as careful when you press and having to rip things out later on, maybe. Or results aren't quite as good as you want them to be. So I think, and I've had to change because I didn't used to do things this way, but the results I get are much better. And so I think this is the way to go. 
It's hard to even tell if this is on here. I have to tell my touch because I can't see it because it's clear. All right, so let's see here. Put this guy down here and take a little bit of time for it to set. Get in there, get in that fabric. That's looking cute. And so I'll have one of these done for my next exchange. And I gotta say, our quilt guild is not running right now, at least in person we're not. We're running virtually online, but we're not running in person because, of course, what's going on in the whole world these days? But while I'm at home, I can work on these because I'm sure at some point in time we are going to be exchanging these. We have two more rounds to go, two more exchange rounds to go, actually. We've done two already. So at the end of this, if I've gotten, let's say, 22, let's just say 22, I'll have 88 blocks. And then you have to figure out what to do with them. Okay, my one guy's not cooperating. So I'm going to put a little bit more on him. I may not have had enough on him, I'm not sure. As you can tell, when there's enough on there, it just goes right down. And so this is um, this little pen here. You can exchange the nibs when they start getting, you know, worn out. You can put new nibs in, and it also refills. So it unscrews from the end here, and I can just put the solution in and screw it back up and ready to go. I love how this allows me to apply this exactly where I want it. So when you're making small blocks like this, it works really well. This is a this is from Acorn Precision Piecing, this easy press solution. These guys are Canadians. I have come up with this. So again, I've got this now. If you want to press it on the back side, you certainly can as well. Sometimes that helps to get it down there. There we go. So there's my first one there, my little paisley guy. It's looking pretty good, eh? The fun thing about making these is that when you go to put them together, you can do all kinds of different things with them. So this is sort of like an I Spy quilt, I think, but they're a little cuter, I think, in uh, a lot of ways. So let me go back here for a second. Okay, so that's how you make them. And so you've got a whole bunch of these things. What are you going to do with them? Well, if you look on Pinterest, you're going to see all kinds of suggestions on how you can put them together. The ones I'm kind of liking the look of are they're kind of wonky. So you have these together, and then you're going to add additional framing around them. In a different color and they you know they can have them all these different ways so that's really kind of cute I like that or some people just put them together or you can put you know stashing in between them in between the rows and in between each block lots of different things you can do with them they're not huge as a matter of fact I don't even know how big they are to be quite honest with you now they're a rectangle right they're no longer a square they're three and a half by what do we got here three and a half by four is what they finish at right now so they're going to be three by three and a half is what they're going to be so they're pretty small i mean you can make them bigger but this is kind of the size that i'm seeing a lot of them at these kind of small sizes um if you wanted to make a quilt of them i would probably suggest you make them bigger sizes than that <laughs> okay because you know it's going to take an awful lot of them to make a quilt and they're going to be pretty small too so if you wanted a bed size quilt or something it's going to be i think it might look a little strange because you've got all these little tiny blocks in there so i think if you wanted to make them into a table runner or a wall hang or something like that would be kind of fun. It would be kind of fun to take fabric, if you could find fabric, um, that has sewing notions in it or quilting notions or things like that and make a little wall hang for your quilt studio. That would be kind of cute. They'd also look really cute as a mug rug too. I think they'd be quite cute as a mug rug. Some of the ones I'm seeing from people, some of them are, you know, the motifs like the cats I was showing you are like just that motif right in the center. Others have a little, you know, some little extra flowers or something on the sides, things like that. But the fun part about doing these as an exchange, I think they make a really good exchange block because you can get all these different looks in them, right? So you have all different um, motifs in them. And that's kind of fun because you probably don't have all that in your studio or in your stash. I mean, I had trouble going through my stash to even find fabric that would work with it because, you know, you don't buy fabric looking for those individual little motifs typically. So I had a hard time finding stuff in my stash, but I was determined it was coming out of my stash and I was not going to go to the store and have to buy fabric for this. And so far, so far, so good. What I found is for the number of ones that I need, the 22 that I need, I've been able to pretty much get away with a fat quarter. That works really probably better than a regular quarter um, meter of fabric. So the fat quarters work really well. So if that's something that you wanna work on, you know, then you start looking at your stash in a whole different way as well, right? 
So yes, um, I want to tell you a little bit too. Um, so Becky was asking about what's the applicator you have for the best press. It's actually not best press. It's called Easy Press Solution. You could use Best Press in it as well, but it's Easy Press Solution. It's a different product, uh, similar to Best Press. It has no scent to it. It has no chemicals in it. Um, I was using Best Press and I found that it was starting to really make me uh, sneeze a lot. So this product does not do that at all. It's much more natural. So it's from Acorn Precision Piecing Products. You can find them online and easy to get in Canada. I think they will ship to the States. I'm not exactly sure. They don't actually sell from their website. You have to get it from another website. A lot of quilt shops carry it. Uh, in the States, I know the Quilt Show has it available for you. Um, they have other products as well, but this is one I'm using is what I use all the time for pressing and I buy it in gallons. Okay, it comes in a big gallon, so that's what I buy it in, and then I can just refill my little pen here. Um, I also have a spray bottle that I put it in where I'm spraying my fabric yardage before I cut it. So, yes, I really like it a lot. Um, also, yes, Kathleen likes the quilt blocks. Oh, loves my new machine. Yes, oh, you're welcome for all the tips and techniques. You're welcome. Um, yes, my new machine, my M7. I'm going to be doing more uh, videos on it for sure to show you all it does because uh, it can do all kinds of things. Of course, it's a big machine. It's just sitting here <laughs> because it's too big to move around. I debated about having a machine behind me on the table, but all my machines are too big to put there and I didn't feel like getting my featherweights out and oiled up to, to do some piecing today. So thanks for bearing with me for the switching back and forth with the cameras today. So um, I will also want to mention a couple things to you. Um, first off, I was talking about the Martelli products. Okay, if you don't know what I'm, if you don't know who I'm talking about, Martelli, the Martelli family is a family-run business out of Pensacola, Florida. They have all kinds of, as I said, notions and templates and uh, long arm rulers and free motion quilting aids and all kinds of things um, for quilters. They look at things, they're not quilters themselves. They look at things as what do quilters tell them that they struggle with and they try and come up with solutions for them. They do very well at that. Um, they are great family to um, order from and support in these tough times. They are very open to um, any questions you have or ideas you have for them, uh, easy to get a hold of them, great customer service, quick response times. Right now, they're doing a virtual trade show because as you know, a lot of the quilt shows, the big quilt shows in the States and in Canada too, have been canceled. And so you have vendors like the Martellis who have product ready to go to show and they want to sell and they can't. So they're doing a virtual trade show instead and they have some really great pricing right now on their products. So I encourage you to take a look at what they have uh, and to see some of the products I've talked about um, that today that you can see on their website. And I actually work with them. I'm an affiliate for them. So if you're interested in looking at any of their products, let me just, I'm trying to give, show you my um, link, how you can get to them. So just give me one second here to do that. Should pop up, there we are. So if you go here, which is bit.ly slash Martelli code, then you can go through and see all the things they have. And like I said, right now, they've got all these different products. I think they're doing some live streams as well to show some of their products, there's videos on them, all that type of thing. So. I do find that I'm using I'm using a lot of their products again thanks to Ravu who has been using their products for quite some time. Love the rotary cutter as well. And and I gotta say the first thing I gotta say about their products and I don't want this to sound like a commercial. Don't get me wrong, but um, when you look at their products, is they look different. That's the first thing you have to get over. Is they look different, but they work really well. So you know it's just a bit of a learning curve. It's easy, easy really. But I mean it's just to get in your head into the fact that this looks different than what I'm used to using, but they work really really well. So, as I said, the fussy cutting stuff was just like I got the fussy cutting windows at the time I needed to do these blocks for my guild, so it worked out so well. <laughs> I was pleased because I thought, how am I going to fussy cut all this stuff? And I knew I was going to struggle with it. So that worked so well for me. Um, it's made it a lot easier to do and much more accurate, which is the main thing because I don't want to give out blocks to people if they're not sewn up properly, right? If I don't have them put together very well. So, okay. So if you're interested in looking at their products, that's what you can do. And otherwise, um, you know, I don't know what you guys are working on right now. If you're looking for something to work on, there's some little Polaroid blocks. Might be a good way to use up some of your stash. You might even just want to make them with just different colors inside, different colored fabrics inside, like little jewels sort of would be kind of cute too, I think. Rather than doing an I Spy kind of look, it could just be different 
fabric colors in the center and I could see a bunch of whole bright bright colors in there and make a little table runner for spring something like that but it is kind of a cute design so we'll go to Pinterest and look up Polaroid blocks you're going to see a ton of these things okay lots and lots of them okay so that's what I've got for you today if you have any questions you can always post them of course in my uh, Facebook page and I do answer them or if you are watching any of my YouTube videos of course I always answer my comments there too and um, the other thing is I wanted to say is if you are not already a member of my Facebook group, join us there. We've got lots of people in there, over 3,500 people in there right now. And we are going to be doing some more lives. We'll probably do another one next week as well. And just to make sure everybody's doing okay during this tough time. Everybody's struggling along mentally, I know. We're all locked in here, so it's tough. But at least we can connect through the internet, which is great. So if you are not a member of my Facebook group, you can go to chatterboxquilts.com slash FB group, answer the three questions just to make sure that everybody is not a robot and, and I'll let you in. Also, if you're really interested in improving your quilting, I invite you to join the Quilters Way. As I said, Rob is one of my members. Deb is one of my members as well. I think that's all that's on here right now that I can see. Um, and that's a private online group. We're off Facebook. We are not in Facebook at all. They're totally separate. We are uh, friends in that group. We support one another and we're all trying to improve our quilting. So if you're interested in taking a look at that, there's a free trial available. Go to thequiltersway.com. We'd love to have you go in there as well. It's lots of fun, lots of learning, lots of support in there too, and people who are looking to improve their quilting and helping one another do so. So guys, look, keep an eye out on my page for the next time we're going to be doing Chatterbox Quilts Live. As I said, it'll be next Thursday, I think unless something changes in my schedule, but I don't anticipate that happening. So thanks a lot for joining me today. Give the Polaroid blocks a try. Let me know what you think. Um, and if you have suggestions for other things we can be doing while we're at home in our studios, please post them on my Facebook page. We're all looking for ideas right now, especially if you've got ideas for using up your stash. Okay, stay happy, healthy, and keep quilting. We'll see you guys in probably about a week.